Revelation, what is the truth they're hiding from us about the Old Testament? The term Old Testament denotes the oldest of the two collections of the books that make up the Holy Bible, which refers especially to the revelation of God, Yahweh, and to his initial reconciliation with the possessed nation of Israel in order that uh, this may uh, be first, they may be first blessed and then all mankind. The books that make up the Old Testament were written by various authors over various centuries. Synonymous names are also the terms Hebrew Scriptures, Hebrew Bible, based on the origin of the authors and the Second Testament. The Hebrew Bible term, Brit, renders rendered covenant means treaty, alliance, contract, or agreement. Thus, the Bible in term is used to denote the agreement that God makes either with individuals or collectively with the people of Israel, and aims to create the condition for a salvation of all mankind. The books of the Old Testament were the only holy scriptures used by Christians and Christ and the Apostles and the early Christian community. The early Christian church called this set of earlier books the Law and the Prophets, or simply the Scriptures. From about the 3rd century AD, the term Old Testament came to be used more broadly for the scriptures completed before Christ, and this term was used in contrast to the later New Testament, the collection of books that refer to the fulfillment of the old promises and the making of the new covenant through Jesus Christ, an agreement between God and all mankind. The earliest translation of the Hebrew text of the Old Testament was made into the Greek language and has prevailed to be called the Septuagint translation. A Nephilim is a Hebrew word of uncertain etymology, which in the Septuagint is referred to, rendered as giants, Genesis 6-4 and Numbers 13-33. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, texts and fragments of texts have been found that refer to Enoch, among which is the Book of Giants, which was widely read, translated into various languages, during the Roman Empire. The giants, quote-unquote, in this apocalyptic work are referred to as the descendants of, of the devouring angels and the daughters of men, just as in the apocalyptic book of Enoch itself, which at this point appears to commemorate the sixth biblical chapter of Genesis. Genesis 6, according to the ancient text of the Septuagint, and it happened that the people became many on the earth, and daughters were born to them. And when the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were good, they took wives for themselves from all over, and chose the chosen ones. And the Lord God said, Let not my spirit abide in these men forever, for they are flesh, and their days shall be one hundred and twenty years. And the giants were on the earth in those days, and after that, as if the sons of God came into the daughters of men and gave birth themselves, those were the giants from the ages, the famous people. And the Lord God saw that the wickedness of men had multiplied upon the earth, and he pondered them diligently in his heart for the wickedness of all days. And the God remembered that he had created man on earth, and he was grieved. Noah's ark was, according to what is described in the book of Genesis of the Bible, a large ark that God commanded Noah to build because of the great flood that was about to be, to, uh, to uh, come to earth. According to the Bible, God was pleased with how righteous Noah was and decided to choose him as a savior of the human race and other species of life from the great flood. He told Noah to build an ark of squared timber and to pave it inside and out. Specifically, the Bible states that the length of the ark is 300 cubits and its width 50 cubits and its height 30 cubits. Inside this ark, Noah put his family, his wife, and his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, with their wives, as well as pairs of all the animals of the world, Genesis 6 7. After the flood and the annihilation of the corrupt race of man, the ark ran aground on the summit of Mount Ararat. The following documentary is revealing. Relations of the New Old Testament for Christians, the Old and New Testament, as are parts of a single organic whole with a common theological interest which is focused on Christ as the relevant and this promise of his coming, 
which we find in the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New Testament. Already from the first period of Christianity, when ecclesiastical writers feel the need to defend their beliefs, they insist that it is not something that appeared for the first time nailed down or sent down from heaven, but on the contrary, it concerns the faith and not new and foreign, which has deep historical as well as theological roots, since it's based on the antiquity and the ancient doctrines of its teaching. The Old Testament begins with the calling by God of a wandering shepherd, Abraham, who lived in the ancient Babylonian city of Ur during the time of Hammurabi, the 18th century BC. The biblical story as a whole refers to the way God acts in the world, cooperating the after agreement with a group of people, but with clear reference to the whole of humanity and not to one people alone. Then, the history of the Christian church also refers to all humanity as a continuation of the so-called divine economy, which takes place within history and enters a decisive phase of it with the presence of Christ. The Old Testament for Christians is not related to the content of the Hebrew Bible, according to the Jews. Christians consider that it has a natural continuity with the New Testament and that it is incomprehensible without the presence of Christ and all that, that took place in his earthly life. After all, Christ himself saw the Old Testament to prefigure his life and action and to prescribe his death and resurrection. In contrast to the Jews, the Christians understand the Old Testament Christologically and they consider it to be the fulfillment of the Old Testament and that the two Testaments function in an inseparable theological unity with the difference being that the Old Testament educates man in Christ while the New Testament leads him to completion in Christ. Ways of interpreting the Old Testament? According to the current theological reality of the majority of denominations, the interpretation of the Old Testament is not carried out by simply reading the text, but based on the interpretation that a church accepts of them. And in the Christian Orthodox Church, behind anthropo anthropopathic, figurative, metaphorical, parabolic, and enigmatic words, phrases, or narratives, symbolic names of persons or animals, organ, uh, organisms, etc., the fathers interpret through the letter the underlying thing. For example, every time it is established that the Old Testament, he perceives God sometimes as a punisher of sin and sometimes as loving and gracious when God himself is presenting, presented saying, suing through Ezekiel, I am the Lord of sorrows and I am the Lord, the Holy One. The interpretation of these expressions is not done arbitrarily, but since the theological tradition accepts that at no time anything bad can come from God, this line of interpretation is followed. And thus, those interpreters who stubbornly insist on the literal interpretation of even fictional, parabolic, or humanistic narratives of the Bible are stigmatized by the Christian Orthodox Church Fathers. This means that the correct interpretation method should be found in an organic connection between the Holy Bible and Jesus Christ. And from this particular example, it follows that the expressions and images of the Holy Bible, but about God being fearful and punishing, are correct, not because God is really angry and punishes, but because the guilty and sinful man sees God as a punisher. And this, uh, you can see Gregorio Nisus and Gregorio of Nisus in his description of the Psalms. However, there is also opposing views, such as that of the biologist R. Dawkins and what he wrote, The Delusion About God, who argue that this way of interpreting interpretation, since it necessarily sees human judgment as a criterion of good and moral, and since as a, 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 such a judgment cannot derive from the literal rendering of the texts, it indicates that the scriptures cannot be considered as objective reports of divine morality, but simply a reflection on the social imperative. This I've translated from a Greek article. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support. 
and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.